who is ready to worship the Lord? Yeah. Boy, that was late, so I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, let's get this thing going. Okay, here we are. Uh, Brother David and Leanne White are here with us this morning. Amen! And then, uh, you got me teaching tonight, but we're not having service tonight. Uh, that was Alicia's fault. Oh. Blame it on Alicia. Uh, Blame it on Alicia. Man, not only is this girl never on time trying to be on time, now he's passing the buck. Man, I have taught him well. Oh, anyway, hey, tonight there is no service. Uh, I think Pastor Ken and Pastor Nancy will maybe down here handing out uh, treats to all those uh, wild guys. That are going to be out tonight. Or at my house, maybe. Or at your house. They, well, they, they have. They want to come in our parking lot for some reason. Everybody wants to hit country for Yeah, yes. well. Okay, then that. Anyway, no services tonight. So kind of keep that going. Um, and then, uh, of course, Wednesday night, uh, I'll say with Brother Dave. And then AA correct, directly after that. And then Thursday is prayer at 2. Now, if you're not on that list, I think most of you are. But for those of you that, that are on Facebook, um, if you would like to be on our uh, mailing list, our email list, uh, see Pastor Kid or uh, Pastor Nancy, and they will make sure you are on that list. Uh, and what you can do is once a day at 945, uh, you will get a, a little devotion. And then on Thursdays, you'll get a double whammy, because right after that comes, hey, we're praying at 2 o'clock. If you have any requests, if you have any requests, Send them back, and if you send them back to that from that text that you get, yes, it is a mass text. However, only Pastor Ken gives the prayer request. So just kind of keep that in mind, all right? And they do get prayed for. All right, hey, let's do some upcoming things. Uh, New Life Drama Team's going to be here next week. All right, now, uh, I need some things from y'all. Okay, first of all, uh, we need some pizza money to feed these little boogers. <laughs> um, and I realize they're teenagers and young adults, but they still eat like little kids, which means they're going to eat it all. And so we're going to order some uh, Casey's pizza from them, and, uh, and I, I'm going to try to use my Casey's points to get more points, so I can get, so I can get gas at a discount. There you go. See, that's just multitasking. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's multitasking. So anyway, hey, listen, we need some money for pizzas. All right? Um, so uh, usually what happens is after you put your offering in, in, the, in our offering tins there, um, Dan takes it and he goes back and he does his thing. So on your way out, please put some money in there so we can feed them little guys next week or the big guys or whatever you want to call them. So we can feed them some pizza. Also, I need some sodas. All right? Yeah. I can't have any anymore. But those guys can. So we need, just bring some sodas next week, all right? Bring as many as you want. And what we don't drink, trust me, we'll drink when we feast on the Word again. That's right. Come in a Amen. Weeks, so. Uh, so we need uh, pizza money and, uh, and uh, sodas for next week. Can we do that? Yes, sir. Yeah. So I, I am, I'm excited for these, uh, these young folks to come. Uh, also, uh, I'm sure uh, Pastor Ken will talk a little bit more about Brother Dave and Leanne. Uh, when it comes time, and so uh, he'll give you some more information on that. All right. Uh, okay, there's a, uh, looks like a Senior Citizen Lunch and Learn with Lunch and Bingo, uh, November the 8th from 11 to 1. Uh, is that the Luther Church? I have no idea how to say that. Isolated. Isolated? Okay, so kind of keep that in mind. It's in your announcements. And then the Bowen family is going to be here uh, Sunday, December 12th. And did, isn't, it, isn't that sunshine great out there? Oh, yeah. Yes. So now it's time to play the game. How long are we going to wait till we turn the heat on? <laughs> um, so, um, so far I'm winning. Uh, although, although uh, eventually the blankets and the PJs will not work. Uh, but until then, we're going to keep that up. So anyway, uh, the Bowen family is going to be here for a Christmas concert on the 12th. So isn't that awesome? Yeah. All right. So hey, listen. Uh, if you want to wear a mask, they are available. Uh, if you choose not to, just keep away from the ones that do, or at least do six feet um, away from them. And let's just, uh, you know, 
let's just be respectful. Amen. Um, and listen, if you're sick, stay home. Please stay home. Uh, you know, um, so yeah, just stay home. You can always watch online uh, in the afternoon. Usually, PK puts it on YouTube. And then, if you do happen to have Facebook, you can watch it live from the Facebook feed, Pastor Kids Facebook feed. So you can still be a part of the family. However, Amen. if you're not sick and you're just lounging, get back to church. Amen. You know, don't don't let the devil rob you of an opportunity to worship and see see just awesome things. Okay. All right. I think that is it. I think this is going to be a morning that God is going to bless. Yes, He is. I, uh, I really do hope we're going to pray that our spiritual eyes, ears, and hearts are open to the truth that God would have for these fine folks this morning. Amen. Um, just, just remember, you know, uh, most of us, we're not normal. No. Um, we are not normal people. Uh, I, will, I, will tell you, I will tell you my thought. My motto, my motto is brain damage is a terrible thing to waste. And uh, I'm not wasting none of it. You ready, my brother, to worship? Well, we, we kind of are. Let me let me say a couple of things before before we get started. Well, here we go. The rest of the way. All right, you guys are waiting now. Here we go. So, listen, y'all, I want you to be praying over the next couple of months. Uh, about an extra offering, especially, I know some people get dividends some time of year, this and that and the other. If you get a little extra money from something, or if one of you wins the lottery, oh, Jesus, let one win the lottery. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, then we, uh, we're we doing uh, uh, Christmas for uh, the orphans at the orphanage in Kenya, and we need $1,200 for that. We, um, Jay, where's Jay? Jay's coming back, but Jay is going to Rhema. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So, uh, I, 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 this is what I'm believing for. Now, it's a, it's, a big, it's a big chunk, but I'm believing that we as a church are going to pay his tuition. Praise so, God. That's like $3,000, I think, isn't it? Something like that. Anyway, so I believe it. Oh, and she, he didn't have to pay it all at once. So every month, just... Kick in a little towards Jay's tuition. I'm going to pay his tuition this year. That shouldn't be too hard. No, it should not be hard. Amen. And there's just always something that we're doing. We've got that. The, we're, we're rebuilding the sign in Elmo, the Jesus sign. There's just a lot of things Amen. that are going on. So, uh, you know, send in your, you, you that are on Facebook, paypalme.com forward slash F-A-F give. Send money. Lots of money. Lots of money. We like money around here. But we have good places to, to put it. We have done some amazing things this last year. We paid off, I think we paid off five widows uh, of funerals for their their husbands that, that were on disability and didn't have money to do it. Praise I mean, God. we've just done all kind of fun things. And we built a church in Kenya. We just, this little bitty church, look what we've done, you guys. Amen. I'm So, uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Did you, are you going to do a prayer? I am. Go ahead. I'm done. I, that's, that's your morning. Uh, I know. I know. Give money. That's your morning. Give money. All right. Speak. All right. So, who's ready to worship? Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Jesus, Jesus. Woo! I hope that's my way home. Man, you guys showed up by the old guy. You got showed up by a That's right. Try it again, brother. Oh, that's what I said. I'm just leaving. Try it again. No, it's called it's called hit one over on the young kid. Hit one over on the young kid. It's called wisdom, my friend. Wisdom, my friend. All right, everybody, take a deep breath. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. So we can Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, you are the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Tau, the Alpha and the Omega, the creator of all things, the lover of our souls and forgiver of our sins. Yes. You are mighty and awesome God. This morning, Lord, we have a special guest. And I just pray that, um, like I always pray, Lord, that you... That they would speak exactly what you once said, no more, no less. Hallelujah. And then when they're Jesus, done, just Jesus. quiet them. 
Not, yes. not as it did, Lord, but we just want to hear from you and you alone. Yes, Lord. Open our spiritual lives and ears and hearts, Lord, for this opportunity that we have this morning. I would ask Amen. you, Heavenly Father, that you would just anoint the praise team. Hallelujah. Just uh, let their fingers just go where you want them to go, Lord, and, and the music that comes out be anointed and glorifying to you. Thank you, Lord, for the things coming up uh, here at Father's Arms. We just want to praise your name and give you all the glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much, Jesus. We praise your holy and precious name. And God's people say it. Amen. Amen. I want everybody to stand, please. If you can. If you can't stand, that's all right. I want you to look at somebody to the right or the left of you and just stretch out your hand toward them. Look them in the eye from a distance and give them a blessing. Speak a blessing on them. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to teach you a new song. Jesus put this song in your God bless you in the name of Jesus. We did it last night. God bless you, Mommy, in the name of Jesus. Jesus put this song to me. Church of God, and uh, that's that's where I first ever played the piano in church, and I didn't play good, I didn't play well, <laughs> but I did the best I could. We faked it, we faked it through, and I, I actually began to learn how to play by ear like I do now uh, at that old church, Amen. And uh, so I, I asked her just to give us a little introduction. She said something last night that just stuck in my heart about something the Lord had shown her concerning having ears to hear. Now, you know, I, a lot of times, right before I preach, I'll say, touch your ear and say, Lord, we yeah, need ears to hear. Yeah. Amen. So I'm going to say that, touch your ear, say, Lord, Lord, give me ears to hear. Give me ears to hear. Amen. Come Amen. In and share about that for a second. Just for a second. Just for a second. I'm going to ask you to do the... So... Put your hand on your heart. Yes. 
and say, Lord, Lord, Lord give me ears to hear. Give me Lord. ears to hear. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> so a while back, the Lord had, you know how Jesus, when he was speaking, and he was in the, in, um, the parable of the sower, and a number of times, he would say, after he spoke, let those who have ears to hear, hear. He who has ears to hear, let them hear. You, you've seen that in the Bible, right? Jesus would say that and say that. And he told me one time, he said, I want you to look into that. What does that mean? Because I know for me, I would often think it wasn't just hearing, it was listening. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and, I, and that isn't wrong, but it's deeper than that. And what oh, he showed uh -huh. me in the Word is that it's actually having a heart open to receiving what he is saying to you. Yes. And what he would have you to hear. So your ears and your heart are connected. So when he says, let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Anyone who is open to hearing this, anyone who is truly open to receiving this, receive it. See, my mom, my mom, um, she was, uh, her saying was dynamite comes in small packages. And there was a reason for that. She was dynamite and she was a small package. But my mom had, she was a wonderful mom and she would tell us the truth, even if it hurt. So there were times where I would say, you know, mom, what's your opinion on that? And her response to me when she'd stop and she'd say, okay, I'll tell you, are you sure you want to know? <laughs> now, what she was saying was, I'm about to give you some loving instruction. Do you really want to me to answer that question for you? And, and it would make me stop. And if I had ears to hear, yes. I'd open up not just my ears, not just listening, but open my heart to receive what she was about to tell me the loving instruction that she was about to give me. And it was full of wisdom. I, I'm not just making this up. Don't believe me. Let's go to the word. Deuteronomy 30, 17 says, But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear. Uh -oh. Did you hear that? Yes. So if your heart turns away so that you do not hear. In Hebrews 3, 7, and 8, it says, That is why the Holy Spirit says, Today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Amen. See, if I, what the Lord showed me is there's scripture after scripture when it's talking about people's hearts are hardened, it says they didn't hear with their ears. There is a connection let those who have ears to hear means your heart yes. is open. It's more than just listening. Amen. It's okay, Lord. Instruct me. Yes. Guide me. I am here. My heart is open to everything that you have for me to receive. Amen. And it's actually receiving that. Isn't that beautiful? How yes. is that he shows us that, but that's in his, that's what that means. And every time that we come in. He would, he is saying, have ears to hear what he has for you to hear. Proverbs 23, 12, apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. Yes. Amen? Amen. So hand over your heart. Mm. Repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That I have ears. That I have ears. Praise God. Praise God. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Are we ready to just, let's just all go into the throne room together. We're going as a family, so let's go boldly. Let's run into the throne room and worship our King. Amen? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Well, that was good. Well, last night and today, just repeating that. That was so good. Stand with me if you would.
this for me, John said, you take us to inspire your song and praise. That rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. This is your name. This is strong and mighty power. Your name. This is shelter like no other. Your name. Let the nations sing it louder. Nothing has the power to say. Like your name. Yes, God. Thank you. 
I love you, Lord. For your mercy has blessed me, and all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing how good it is for God. Thank you. 
one minute or what second that he's going to come. That's right. Amen. He's going to go to heaven or hell. So I pray that everybody's ready. Praise your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I wish you'd share a little bit about my Sunday. I want to come back over here. Just just tell what what happened Monday morning when you woke up. Can you add that? Can you do it that day? <laughs> We had a real special service last week, and Pastor had, was prepared to give, to give a message. He had everything written down, he showed us, but of course, God teached him into another, into another area, and, um, and praise God, he did, because it's what I needed. You know, just throughout all, all this COVID and everything we've just gone through, it's been kind of <coughs> heavy, a heaviness, and I just didn't even realize that the heaviness was there. You know, just going about the daily tasks and doing what we had to do. But um, Pastor taught on the mercies of God. And I got up the next morning, and I'm telling you, I just was as light as a feather. I just mm -hmm. felt like so much had been lifted off of my shoulders. And Thank I you, Lord. Blessed, and I just had a, a better attitude. Probably toward my hubby. You know? <laughs> yeah, just everything. But God just blessed me through, through that message, you know, because it's just been a... It's been a trying time for all of us. And so I'm just so thankful to see everybody here this morning and be here myself. Praise God. Amen. 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 I appreciate you so much. Amen. Love you. Bless the Lord. So good to see you. Rhonda, well, so good to see you. It's good to see so many here. And this young lady over here, I don't know your name. What's your name, honey? You, yes. And it's good to see you. I think you've been here Amen. once before, but... It's so good to see you again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So many coming home. Amen. Wonderful. Miss Linda, bless the Lord. Praise God. Yes. Well, we are so privileged today to have uh, in our presence uh, a man of God that I really dearly have learned to love. Uh, of course, he's not hard to learn to love. <laughs> not that bad. But uh, Brother Dave, David White, and uh, uh, you know, a lot of people introduce, you know, and then this, and then uh, this is uh, the, the wife of, this is the husband of Leanne. Because <laughs> I've known Leanne longer. Praise the Lord. And uh, huh? you get that a lot, do you? That's okay. Well, you know, I think that George Meyer and Dave is in my so it'll be all right. But Dave's got a word from the Lord for us today. Praise God. And it's going to be good. Yeah. Praise God. Are your uh, ears open to hear and your hearts open to understand? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand together and uh, let's have a prayer as Brother Dave comes and stands. Here, are you going to use this mic? Or this mic? You're going to use this one? Okay. Uh, just to stretch your hand out toward him, and Father, we pray a blessing on Brother Dave as he teaches us today. I thank you that your word shall come alive in us, and shall be quickened unto us, into our hearing, into our understanding, and into our walking and out in our lives. We thank you, Lord. We're not just hearers of the word, but we're doers of the word. Yes, God. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Do what you want in this service, Holy Ghost. Do what you want. Do what you want. This is your... Service. Brosele. Bracadiste. Brastanduliatasia. Brosene cherele stabokho. Anahasaya. Ilistaho. Kolistaha. Menistamo. Tasibaha. Brodele. Brasabadula. Bedishania. Brastile. Brastile. Tabastunyaha. Mananasanamo. Koliatasia. I have brought you here for this purpose. This day, to hear this word, I have brought you here to be healed in your body. I have brought you here to be healed in your soul. I have brought you here this day to walk in a new way and in a new confidence in your God. I have brought you here to hear the word and you shall see the restoration of families. You shall see... 
that the hearts of the fathers shall be turned unto the children. The hearts of the children shall be turned unto the fathers. Embrace the naya kolabasadi tebeda mosalele kolabamanahashisi. Those that have been afar off are coming home. They're coming home. They're coming home to Father's house. For there is a call of the Spirit. There is a call of the Spirit and a wind of my breath that is bringing back the prodigal. And this is the day. This is the hour. This is the age. You shall see great restorations. Yes, God, in the name of Many that have been broken and wounded. Many who have been addicted. Many who have been controlled by the enemy's hand. You shall see the shackles fall and they shall come to a deliverance of your God. For my hand is upon this earth and my hand is upon my church. My church is not weak. My church is positioning for a great awakening and you shall see it. Says the Spirit of the Living God, and you're going to see it. Needs to hold around, not de lebesa. You're going to see a move in families. Families are going to come to church together. Families are going to minister in their homes together. They're going to come Bible studies that are going to rise up all across this nation and the earth in homes. And you're going to see a mighty move from the homes. The fathers are going to rise up and be the Bible teachers in the home. The fathers are going to rise up and you're going to see in this next 10 years a mighty move of the Spirit of the Lord. You're going to see families do what they're supposed to have been doing all along. Hallelujah. 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 That's what the Spirit is saying. It's going to be so. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Nia. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Children can go to children's church. (laughs) Was I supposed to give you the mic? (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you, Pastor Kenny. Nancy, it's just good to be here. Amen. I've already learned a lot, but a brain damage is a terrible thing to waste. So, <laughs> take that one home. Um, <laughs> anyway, today I, I, uh, I'm just so honored to be here, and, and Pastor, Pastor Kenny and, and Nancy mean a lot to, to first to my wife and then to me. And uh, we're, uh, we're just honored to be here. Uh, we, uh, we both started out in... Uh, in, in small towns, and uh, I've lived in a much smaller town than this one. You can imagine that there are, you know, uh, I'm trying to think. I think I, I, I think I lived in a town of 23. I believe that was the population of our unincorporated town. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, big city, little city, <coughs> where you are, God will just meet you right there. Won't he? Isn't he yeah. good? You know, I, I want to, Pastor, Pastor Ken and, and, and uh, Nancy asked us to come and talk about families. So uh, uh, we, we, uh, we endeavored to do that, and, and we're going to talk about families some more. But, but you know, I, I, I was single for a long, long, long time. So, you know, but even if, if you're single, it, yeah, I'm, I'm still talking to you because you got family, too. It isn't like... It's not like I'm just talking to moms and dads and their kids That's or right. grandpa and grandma and their kids and their grandkids. I'm not just talking to you. I, Leanne and I were both single for a long, long time. I was single a lot longer than her. But, uh, you know, God's just good, and, and he, he loves us, and he wants to uh, he wants hope back in families. You know, I know so many families who don't have hope. They, they've just given up. They say, well, it's not working. It's not working. My kids are this, or my husband's this, or my wife is this, and it, and it's just not working. But First Corinthians chapter thirteen: Are we going to believe that? Are we going to believe our fear and our discouragement? Hello, I, I know your answer. You don't have to say anything. But First Corinthians thirteen thirteen says these three remain: faith, hope, and love. I remember a day I had no hope, and uh, that, that was quite a long time ago. But when I tell you I had no hope, I was 99.9999999% sure that God hated me. 
I, I'm not joking. I'm dead serious. And uh, I, I didn't have any hope. And, uh, you know, the Lord will just put people in your pathway. He'll, he'll start encouraging you. If you'll just listen to Him, yes. He'll encourage you every single time. He's not going to just leave yeah. you there in the dust, in the mud. Amen. Now, you may have trouble getting out of the mud, but <laughs> that's not His fault. I'm just going to tell you that. But, but you got to get yourself out of the mud. But I can remember when I first started getting hope, I, I, I went to a Bible study. The Lord reminded me of this this morning. I went to a, a Bible study with a lady who I didn't know at the time, but she was very unstable. And she started telling me after the Bible study how God was going to bring very bad circumstances into my life to teach me. And how God was going to bring hardship into my life to help me grow closer to Him. And I walked out of there going, you know, all that hope that I had started to get just kind of went down the drain. And I was like, well, it's worse than I knew. <laughs> and honest to God, I went home and you'll, you can... You weren't there, so you don't know what happened. But I, I sat down on my bed, and I opened my Bible, and uh, it fell open to Psalm 1. And I'm not joking. As God is my witness. I looked out at the page, and there were, there were you know how, you know, the old theaters that have those lights that raced around in a circle? I'm not joking. There were lights going around a verse on the page, and I was intelligent enough to look down and read what that verse said. And it's from Psalm 1, and it says, you know, blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, he understands the way of sinners, but his life is in the law of the Lord, and in that law doth he meditate day and night, day and night, for he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And then it says this, it says, his leaf shall not wither. You know, God's not out withering your leaves. Amen. He's not out making your life tough. No, 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 no. Jesus Amen. said, what did he say? He said, I came that you might have Life. withered leaves. No. That's what he said, right? No. no, 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 no. I mean, that's ridiculous, isn't it? But, but many of us, if you grew up in church, many of us grew up in those churches where that's what they told us. Tony Cook said this one day. He said, he, I laughed. He goes, yeah. He goes, you know, Jesus brings bad circumstances into our lives to teach us. You know how that is. You know, like he grabbed the disciples one day. You remember this. You remember this in the Gospels, right? He, he grabbed the disciples and said, Oh, come on, guys. It's nighttime. We're going to go over to Brother So-and-So's house. We're going to knock the wheels off his chariot to teach him a lesson. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's not in the Bible anywhere, is it? No. And Jesus, what he said, you know, he went around, we know this, Acts 10, he went around doing good. Hello. Yeah. Right? Isn't that right? He went around doing good and healing all who were possessed of the, or uh, oppressed of the, Devil. devil, right? So so we know he went around doing good. See, that's what he's still doing. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Hello. So that means God, the Father, and Jesus, neither one of them are going around doing bad stuff to anybody. And then the Holy Spirit's our comforter. So that's that, that makes it unanimous. None of them are that's doing bad stuff. Amen. Okay? But, but I'll tell you, I was brought up being told, we sang songs about God bringing... Bringing bad stuff into our lives. And, and I'll tell you what, I did. I got to the point where I had zero hope. But God is the God of, of comfort and mercy and hope. And he knows how to get you where you need to be and your family where it needs to be. Okay? I'm telling you, he does. You don't have to believe it, but I'm just telling you, he does. Now, some of you are sitting out here feeling disqualified. How many of you ever felt disqualified? Oh, Lord, I, I live there. But you know what? You think about this for a minute. If God had disqualified you, he wouldn't be there to tell you you were disqualified. He'd just be gone. Isn't that right? And, and, and that, if it isn't God telling you you're disqualified, that only leaves the devil. So you know it's not God. If you feel disqualified, isn't it not God that's fault that you feel disqualified? He doesn't disqualify you. He loves you. He's just trying to get you to a place where you're loving life. You know, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and life abundantly. And if, if you're not having life abundantly, he wants you to figure out how to get to the place where you can have life abundantly. Amen. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. All right. Families are messy. Anybody figure that out yet? Yeah, family, oh, yeah. Lord. Family's messy. You know, I left, you know, Leah and I, uh, we, we aren't coming from the ivory tower, untouched by the real circumstances of life. You know, my, life, my, my wife... She, she's, a, she's a beautiful lady, in case you haven't figured that out. And, and people, 
They do. They treat her like she's never had a rough circumstance in her life. So I made a list, just a short list of the things that just popped into my head. So just bear with me. Don't be offended by anything on this list. But this is the stuff that's happened not in our immediate family, Leanne and Jake and I and, and our daughter-in-law, Alicia, not just the four of us. Jake's actually my stepson. But, but, but not just the four of us, but our extended family. You ready to hear the list? You ready? Yeah. You can probably relate. Okay, sickness and cancer, sexual abuse, rebellion, financial stress, job loss, bankruptcy, drug and alcohol abuse, DUI, depression, adultery, strife, anger, death of a young spouse, death of a child, pornography, fornication, divorce, incest, suicide, homosexuality. You want me to keep going or should I just stop there? See, you know, we come from a real world. Right. We dealt with all this stuff. You're like, yeah. oh, that sounds like my family. Yeah, it probably does. Anyway, I hope it doesn't, but if it does, you know, just bear with me. And don't be offended or shocked if I just read some of that stuff. Because I'm telling you, God, <laughs> see, see, how are we supposed to navigate through life as a person, as a family, as a single person, as a married person, as a divorced person, as a person with a messy, complicated family life? How are we supposed to navigate? That's what God wants us to do. You know what the first step is? What did Jesus say to the disciples? Follow me. me. Yes. At one of my low spots in in my life, I was down at Rain. I was a tough, tough, tough moment in my life, and uh, I I I've never before or since. But I I I almost hate guys. I hate admitting this, lady. You won't care, but the guys, you'll understand why I don't want to say this. But but I cried myself to sleep one night. I've never done that before or since, and and I. Uh, uh, see, you ladies aren't bothered by that. You guys are like, understand, I, I'd rather not tell you that. And I don't know why the Lord's telling me to tell you, but he is. So, so, so anyway, I, I, I just didn't see what the answer was, right? So that was on a Tuesday night, Wednesday night. We had church, and Pastor Hagen did this message, and at the end, he always closes, and he started to close, and he goes, okay, stop. Everybody pray in tongues for a second. He's never done that before since that I've ever seen. And, and... And after a moment, we pray in tongues, and after a moment, he goes, so, you cried yourself to sleep last night. I'm like, well, he's got my attention. He goes, here's what the Lord would say to you. I was expecting something profound, lengthy, life-changing, that it was, but you understand. He goes, here's what God says to you, follow me. He goes, all right, we're done, close, get everybody going. And I'm like, all right, well, but, but you know what? That's about as profound as it gets, you guys. Okay. Yes, follow That's me. That's about as profound as it gets. Follow me. You know, yeah. and as you're navigating through life as a family, as a husband, as a wife, you follow him. Do you understand what I just said? All right, yeah, I'll pick on you two since, since we met. You know, it doesn't say you follow him and you follow her. It doesn't say that. It says you both follow him, all right? Yeah. And he already brought you together. He's not going to lead you apart. See Amen. what I'm saying? They're going to lead you in two different directions. That's right. Well, yeah, but maybe I married the wrong person. Really, you're married. You married the right person. You're fine. You know, you just follow God, okay? And he'll follow, he'll lead you together out of whatever mess it was. I'm telling did, did he not say he was the good shepherd? Yes. You understand what a shepherd is, right? Yeah. You know, I, my grandparents had sheep on their farm. My grandma would go out there, those sheep would come and run into her. And I would go out there, and those sheep would go running away from me as fast as they could get. Okay, and I, I hadn't done anything. I had never seen them before, but they run. But not when Grandma went out there. They ran to her. See, see, they have no sense to follow their shepherd, do we? Hello. 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 You guys awake out there? Amen. Amen. All right, I'm glad. My sheep hear my voice. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Do you hear that? Yes, you know amen. Them. And they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Hallelujah. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. You hear that? Yes. And no one is able to snatch them out of his hand either. Hello. Hallelujah. You see that? You know, Psalm 91, 15 says, He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Hello. Yes. You got any trouble in your family? God's right there with you. Yes. We got some trouble in my family. 
We were getting ready to leave. My wife got a text. She goes, oh, there's drama. I'm like, I'm sure there is. <laughs> 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 you know, understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, uh, Chuck Flynn, who has spoken at this church before, also spoke at the church I was on staff at back in the 80s. And he, uh, he, uh, he spoke over me. And it was an interesting time in my life, but he spoke over to me, and one of the things he said to me was, your family is a gift to you. And I kind of thought inside, not much of a gift, Lord. But, but, but see, see, God knows what you need. He knows who you need. You know, the children he gave you, he knew what kind of a parent they needed. You know, you know what yes, I'm talking amen. about? He did. And, and so... You know, he, he has a different perspective. Now, see, we think a good family is one that has no problems, everything's going good, there's always plenty of money, we have a great house, we have a swimming pool in the backyard. You know, okay, right? I mean, if we start picturing this would be a great family, and I don't have that, but I sure, I sure would like that. No, God's perspective is very different because he's going to look at the family that's going to meet your emotional needs, the family that's going to challenge you, the, the family that's going to, the, the, the family, the people that need you, that need your personality, that need your input, that God's looking at it different than you see it. Because, because he knows better than we do. Have you ever noticed that? He's smarter than us. Amen. I'll tell you what, he's, he, uh, he's told me some things over the years and I was like, Lord, that can't be right. You got to know. That can't be right. But it is right. Yes, it is. You know, our, the perfect family, as he sees it, is love, right? We're walking in the truth. We're in church, right? But that doesn't always work as easy as it should, does it? No. No. I mean, you know, my, I, I, uh, my, my, uh, my aunt and uncle who, who love the Lord with all their hearts, I, they have four kids, and I don't, I don't know if any of them are in church, maybe one of them, you know? But, but that's going to change, because I'll tell you what, the Lord hasn't, you know, he, he knew. He, you know, they were good parents. Were they perfect parents? Probably not. I don't know of any mistakes I made, but, you know, they probably weren't perfect parents. Uh, you probably weren't a perfect parent. I'm certainly not a perfect parent. So uh, uh, the only perfect parent that I know of is God, right? Amen. And he's, he's a perfect parent. So... So him, you know, him we can trust, all right? But how many of you, <laughs> how many of you are saved? How many of you have asked Jesus in your life? Yes, Just kind of amen. wait at me if you haven't, and you don't know what I'm talking about, well, we'll talk to you after service. But the rest of you, you, you know, if you've asked Jesus in your life, uh, I'm, I'm sure, you know, that, that most everybody in this room is saved. But, but let me say this to you, and hear, hear what I'm saying. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that you don't see yourself the way God sees you. No. Nope. Okay? Because, because you know you're saved, but you also have this reality that you perceive around you, you know, the life you live, the family you live in, the house you live in. None of it's perfect. And, and so, so you, I'm just going to tell you, you don't see yourself the way God sees you. Now, I, I, if, if you, you think, well, I got both feet on the ground, I'm pretty realistic, I, I see things the way they are. Okay, good, I hope you do. Um, years ago, I, I worked in psychiatric care, and I, I worked with some anorexic patients who were literally skin and bones. They didn't, I mean, they looked like skeletons. And yet, when they looked in the mirror, they saw overweight. Yeah. And you're wow. like, that's impossible. How could they possibly look in a mirror and see that and think overweight? They did. How did they do that? I don't know. But, but I, I just want you to hear me when I say you don't see yourself the way God sees you. That's right. I'll I, I, I tell you this. I was talking to, one, to God one day, some time ago. I, I was talking to God about... I was, I was talking to God about what I saw as the worst thing in my life. Think about the worst thing in your life for half a second. I was talking about the worst thing about me in my life. You know, at that time, what I wished I could change, what I wish I wasn't dealing with, which I wish would just go away, and I, I wouldn't have to think about it anymore. And, and here's... <laughs> I, I, the Lord spoke to me in words. He doesn't do that super often. But he spoke to me in words that day. And you know what he said? He goes, there's nothing wrong with you in that area. 
I, I was just like, what? Wait a you know, it'd be like if I went out and had a car crash, I ran into a pole, and, and you walked up to me and said, there's nothing wrong with your car. I'm like, okay, are you stupid? Are you blind? Are you, are you from another planet? What are you? Look at my car. It's ruined. But no, no, no. But, but our lives are different than that. Now, just hang with me. You're looking at me like, what is that? Uh, what does uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 say? You know that verse? I bet, I bet you know that verse in your church. And I'm trying to find it because it's in my notes somewhere. And, uh, but but it, it doesn't matter. If any man is in Christ, yes. or woman, right? What? what? He is a new creation. New creation, the new creature. Now, no, no, no. let's think about this for half a minute. Does God lie? No. no. Okay. So if God doesn't lie, and he says you're a new creature, and it says the old things have passed away, which things? Well, all of them that were anything negative or bad. And and yeah, yeah. and all things, how many things? All things. Now see, do you feel, and now let's just be real here, do you feel in your feelings that all the old things have passed away and all things have become no. new? No. I don't feel that way, and I doubt if you feel that way, but... but the God who can't lie. Come on. Yes, that. amen. Did he, did he not say that? He said that. So, so if he can't lie, and that's the truth, then when he said to me, there's nothing wrong with you in that area, it's like, okay, but I look at it like there's something wrong. Yes, I do. But there's nothing wrong with me in that area. You know, <laughs> you ever look in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and there's this whole list. Such were, were, Past him. No, Such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified. See, see, he he is just leading you right out of all that old junk, and he's leading you into a new way of thinking. Okay, praise and God. About our families, sometimes we need we need a new way of thinking. Yes. You know, the God Almighty, the Maker of the universe, if He says you're a new creation <laughs> in Christ. And that the old things are passed away. He meant that you are a new creation in Christ and that the old things are passed away. Alright? So, so if you're spending all of your time looking backwards at the old things, you need to turn yourself around and look the other direction and say, Okay, Lord, what do you want me thinking about instead of worrying about all that and thinking about all that all the time? See, most people live looking at the past, wondering about the past, wondering about their past mistakes, wondering about why did I do that or why did they do that to me? And, and you know what? And we look at ourselves and we think, I'm a mess. My family's a mess. You know, what is it my wife says? A hot mess. Um, you know, you guys say that down here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it does seem that way to us. And in Philippians, he said, work out your own salvation. But you know what he means by that? It's kind of like that verse that says, put it on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, what, what he's telling you is that you need to figure out that the old things are passed away, and he wants you to get a look at where you're going. Amen. You know, I can remember when I was young, I get so frustrated with the Lord, I'll just say that, yeah, I can talk to you guys, right? Uh, I get so frustrated with him because I'd ask him about dealing with something in my past, and he'd be talking to me about my future, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I get that, but what about this? And I kept trying to get him to look back at this. He doesn't look back at that. He's not even interested in that. The Bible says that, you know, like with regard to our sin, as far as the east is from, from the, the west, west. Yes. so far as he separated from us from our sins. So why are you still thinking about it? Really? Yeah, yeah but when I was 20, oh, <laughs> great, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I was 20, I did this. Okay. Whatever, move on, you know. He forgot about it. It says, he says he threw it in the sea of forgetfulness. You yes. can remind it, you know. Here, that'd be like me, you know, reminding my wife, you know, remember when you backed into the garage door? Remember when, you know, and then, you know, a week later, honey, remember when you, remember when you backed into the garage door? And, ah, what are you, you know, and then remember that about that garage, you know, and I just keep, I mean, after a while, she's going to, would you just forget about the garage door already, you know, let's move on. Well, yeah, but we do that to God all the time. We're just going to keep reminding him huh. of all the stuff we did, and that's what my dad did, and that's what my mom did, and, and that's what our kids have done. Okay, you're just going to, you're going to just live there? You know, we have to learn. <laughs> we have to learn 
how to stop fussing and worrying and fretting about stuff that doesn't even matter anymore and think about what's really, really important. In our Amen. Life. Because, because the past is not important. What do you say to do about the past? Do you remember? Forget about it. Amen. We could all be like New Yorkers. Forget about it. All right? So let's do that. Forget about it. All right? Now, that seems like, yeah, but why should I forget about it? That was really important. That changed my life, and I'm really hurt. Okay. Okay. But you hear what you're saying, right? You're not forgetting about it. You're not moving on. Huh. And, and, I, and let, me, let, me, let me make a, you know, the Lord's helped me. He's worked through stuff for me over and over, and he'll do that. But you know what? If you'll just do what he said and point your nose this way instead of that way, those things, will he'll work them out. You just let him do it. You're trying Amen. to work them out. And I'll just, can I just tell you from my own personal experience, that don't work. Yeah. All right? You can try. Maybe it'll work for you, but I'm pretty sure it won't. So you might as well just do what he said and just point your nose this direction and start looking at the future and figure out what he wants you to do about your life, about your family. Amen. You know, thank you, Lord. My dad, when I was young, my dad didn't know how to be a dad. He was raised by his siblings who were all about the same age as him. He was the youngest of eight kids, and they weren't particularly nice to him. His parents were always working and gone. And uh, he didn't know how to be a parent. He was a bad parent when I was a little kid. The older I got, the better parent he became. Because my mom was the opposite. She, was a, she grew up in a pretty good home and had pretty good parents. But my dad thought that the answer to, to fixing a family was to be very, very controlling. Anybody grow up in that home yeah. like me? Yeah, okay. You know, lots of us want to be controlling. We want to fix something. We want to fix everything huh. by being controlling about it. And I'm going I'm to put a couple things to you here. I'm going to throw a couple verses at you, and I, and I want you to think about this, all right? Because, because controlling doesn't work. It's ineffective. It's unproductive. Even yeah. if you could control everything and everyone, you wouldn't be happy. That's right. I'm just telling you the Amen. truth. You wouldn't be happy, and the more you the try to control, the more you realize it doesn't work, and that you can't really do it. You know, we we uh, we hear everybody say this that God is in control. You know, how many of you, if you listen to Christian radio, you hear God is in control? Well, yes, and also no. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't get mad at me because I just said God's not in control. All right, yes, he is the creator. He's all-powerful, creator of the universe without beginning or end. He's the judge of all things in the end. But he's not in any way controlling because he made you and me with a free will. He made all the angels with a free will, and a third yeah. of them abandoned heaven and followed That's the right. devil. That's right. Why would you do that? I don't know. I'm not an angel, but they did. The Bible says so. And, and, and he made us with a free will. It says he made us in his image. Yeah. So I want to explain something to you. And this, oh, this, this, I, your pastor's all about not being controlling though. So you probably heard this, but, 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 but your will, my pastor says this all the time. Your will trumps God's will every time. Did you know that? You're like, wait, that can't be true. He's God. Well, yeah. Okay. If I wanted to walk out here walk out this door and go down to the gas station down the street and rob it, I, he would not stop me. Do you understand that? He's not going to be there, not going to have an angel at the door, you shall not pass. You know, it's not going to, that's a Lord of the Rings reference for you. But anyway, uh, he's not going to be there to stop you. If I had decided to watch an X-rated movie on the cable TV at the hotel last night, do you think he would have been there and said, don't do that? No, he wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have stopped me. You understand? He's not controlling. Now, would he have been happy if I did either one of those things? No, there's consequences. You try to rob a quick trip, they probably have cameras. They probably have me arrested before I got back to, you know, before I made it to St. Louis today. But, but you know, my point is, is that he, he, he if, you know, he's not willing that any should perish. Isn't that That's right? right. That's but people are perishing. He not, you know, Jesus died and carried your sins to the cross, but there's lots of people walking around in their sins. He died on the cross and took your sicknesses. But do you know any sick people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, because your will trumps his will every time. Every time. Mm. That's heavy. 
Wow. <laughs> it's heavy. You know, but Romans 6, we're not going to go there because of time, but I, because I get into Romans 6 and then I don't want to leave. But it, it says we were slaves to sin, but that we died to sin and we can walk in newness of life. Yes. Now, does that mean none of us are ever going to sin? No. No, it doesn't mean that. How many of us have made mistakes? I hope, you know, hopefully you haven't sinned yeah. today. Okay, but, uh, uh, you know, but, but even if you have, the point is, is that, 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 that we, we don't have to anymore. Back when we weren't saved, we didn't have any choice. It says we were slaves to sin. When you're a slave, yeah. you've got to do what you're told. Now, God has set you free, and you can walk free, you can walk free, and do whatever he says, but you also cannot do what he says. You've got a choice. And it's a choice you have to make every day, multiple times a day. Amen. How are we going to do this? How are we going to have our family? How are we going to do? But, but you know, we, in our family, we don't do obligation. Okay? We're back to controlling. God's not controlling, and we don't do control. When Leanne and I got married, I was a children's pastor, and she goes, well, I guess I'll have to get involved in children's ministry. I was like, stop right there. The only thing you got to get involved with in the church is what the Lord tells you to get involved with. Right. Amen. If you want to get involved in an area, or you see a need in an area, and you want to help there, that's great, but you're not getting involved in children's ministry unless the Lord tells you to, because that's not how we do this. We're not, we're not living in obligation. We're not living in control. And... Uh, you know, we uh, we taught our son that. You know, God, you know, he'll say, you know, he'd say things like, well, you know, I, I've got work to do and I've got all this stuff going on, but I really, you know, I just feel like I have to go to church about this. I'm like, hmm, hmm, stop. We don't do obligation. See, see, we're not, you know, uh, what does Galatians 5, 1 says? It is for freedom that God set you free. Yeah. Okay. He set you free so you could be free. He yeah. didn't just set you free and not tell you about it. He set you free so you could walk in freedom every day, all day. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to say that. So let's, now, when kids are little, you gotta, you got to control what they do. But, but it's more like guidance, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we're, not, we're not being controlling. We're not, we're, not, we're not stressing them out. See, see, God isn't like that. And... And, uh, you know, lots of times when we get controlling, it's because things appear to be going in a direction that we selfishly don't want them to, all right? Okay. You ever know a parent, if you were this parent, don't listen at this moment because I, I don't want you frustrated, but do you ever know a parent who, who was like, well, I, I was a baseball player when I was a kid, and my son, by God, is going to play ball. Okay, that's great, but what if your kid doesn't want to play ball? You know, what if they don't like that? You know, what do you, what do you do with that? But, but see, see, as a parent, I want to see our son turn into the person that God made him to be. That's right. I want to see him love the things that God made him to love. I want to see him follow the Lord. But, but you know, if you're a known parent who did this, and if you did it again, don't, 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 don't beat yourself up. It's just, it's just not what, not what I would recommend. It, you know, like they, you know, I knew a parent who'd make their kid write out <clears throat> chapters in the Bible as punishment. Well, okay. That's not a good idea. Okay, because they're mad already that they have to do this, and now they're going to be mad at the Bible. Is that what you want? No, of course you don't want that. You know, we have to be careful how we talk around our kids. Now, yeah. maybe, now again, you know, we've all messed up. We have messed up. Don't, don't, don't think I'm talking down to you. That's why I read that list at the beginning of all the stuff my family's dealt with. So you don't understand, I'm not talking down to you in any way, but we got to watch what we say around our kids. Amen. Um, I, I was talking to a parent in our church some time ago, and she has 150 children or so. I don't remember if they have more children than I can count. And, uh, and she's talking. And Joshua did this, and Joshua did that, and Joshua's this kind of a person, and he won't listen to anybody. And then I realized, she's in the van with every single one of those children of hers, and every single one of those kids heard her ranting and raving about Joshua, including Joshua. Come on. Well, hello. 
I have you, I mean, again, I get it, but I mean parents. Okay, parents, think about this. Think about how this yeah. makes a kid feel. And don't, if you did it, again, don't, don't, I'm not beating you up, but don't say things like, well, I just can't wait till school starts again. Get these kids out of the house. Hello. Don't say that. Think about how they feel. That's not good. <laughs> I can't wait till this kid goes off to college. I've seen parents say that right in front of their kids. I thought, you, you just put a knife in their heart. Some kids would really be hurt by that. Other kids would just be like, yeah, whatever. You know, but, but, but kids are all different. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so let's think about what we're saying. You know, don't, you know, I'm not saying you should never have a disagreement as parents in front of your kids because they, you know, that's good for them to see how you work that out. But, but I'm also saying, you know, if it's real ugly, don't, don't talk about it in front of the kids. You know, don't do that. Amen. You know, you want to make them feel like their home is an unstable, unsafe, unsafe place. No, you don't want that. You want them to feel secure and safe. You know, I, I when when Leanne and I got married, Jake was 13, 14, 13, 13, something like that. Now my dad was real controlling, like I told you. So 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 we'd have conversations and she'd say, Jake, this is what's gonna happen. And Jake like, okay, can I I, I wanna present uh, an argument and you know, I mean he'd like an attorney or something, you know, here he is, thirteen <laughs> years old, you know, and, and he was he was unusually small for thirteen, you know, so he was like not you know, I was, I was, at 13, I was this tall, because I haven't grown since I was 13, but he was like this tall, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I'm like, and she'd be like, okay, say it, what do you think, what do you think, and so he'd present his case as to why what she said wasn't reasonable, and why she, he should allow him to go in a different direction, and I'd be like, whoa, I've never seen that before, but, but you know what? You know, your kids are thinking beings. You realize, just like you, they were created in the image of God. Yes, amen. Hello. So, you know, would you, and, and she still didn't agree. She'd go, no, nope, that's not how we're going to do it. But sometimes she'd go, okay, all right, that's reasonable. We'll do that. But my dad would have never done that. But you know what? I'll tell you what. Jake, Jake is walking with the Lord. He never misses church. Praise God. Now, nah. Uh, did I ever miss church after I got to adulthood? Yeah, because I was so glad to not be under that control anymore that I was kind of like, woo here we go. But but you know what? The Lord never let go of me. And, and so if your kids are doing stuff, don't just harp on them and beat them up because of what they're doing. You know, because because that's not going to help. You understand that, right? Now, is it in us to do that? Yeah, we probably said things that we shouldn't have said. Yeah, but but you know what? Overall, let's let's... Let's surround our children and our family. Some of you all are look like you're older than, than having little kids at home, so that's good. So are we. Uh, but, but you may have grandchildren, but let's surround them with faith and love. Let's surround them with faith and love. Let's yeah. believe the best. Let's believe that God's at work. All right? Because didn't he say what? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he said that. So let's believe it. And let's, and, and you know, bring up a child and the way you should go, and the end you will not depart from it. Doesn't it say that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. are we going to believe it or not? I mean, yeah, we're going to believe it. We're going to stand on that and go, yes. All right, Lord, you said it here. And, and it may take a while. Brother Hagin told this story. He, he of, a, of a lady who came to him, and she, she said, I, I'm just worried to death about my son. Okay, he's like, okay. And, and, and she told me, he's out partying. He's out doing this. He won't go to church. I've been on him. He won't listen to me. And Brother Hayden told her, you quit. Don't say another word. Don't say anything. You surround him with faith and love. Don't be controlled. Amen. You just surround him with faith and love. And you just let him. You just, you just back off. So she did. And she started standing on what the word said instead of her worries. And he'd be out late. He'd be out half the night. And, but she knew, he knew every, every Sunday morning, she knew he'd be off to church. So one Saturday, well, it was really Sunday morning in the middle of the night, right? In early hours of Sunday, he comes in late. Now, she hadn't said anything to him for a long time. She gave up that controlling thing. She was surrounding him with faith and love. And, and he got in, and somehow she was awake. She went out and said hello to him. He goes, Mom, I think I'm going 
I think I may go to church with you in the morning. She goes, here's what I said, but I could hardly believe my ears. I said, no, no, son. You got in so late. You really need your rest. Why don't you just sleep in in the morning? <laughs> I love that. Is that good? Yes, it really is. He's like, no, mom, I'm going to get up. And he did. And he went to church with her. And six months later, he was as on fire for God as he had been for the devil. You know, oh, but, but, yes. but Amen. see, she quit trying to control him. She quit trying to harp at him. She quit lecturing him. Hello, we all want to do that, That's don't you? You've got this, do you ever do this? I do this. i got a whole lecture plan in my brain. Here's what I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Here's what I'm going to say. And then y'all are looking at me like, really? <laughs> yes, I do that. And then sometimes... You know, I, sometimes I learn not to do that, okay? Man. Sometimes I do good. One time I was, I, I don't even remember, I, I'd forgotten so long ago, but I was, I was upset with you about, you were just grumpy, and, and everything I said was the wrong thing, and everything I did was the wrong thing. Now, I should get a little history here. Jake had gone off to college, right? And, and, and I was, I was done with it. I was done being the object of her irritation. You understand what I'm saying, right? If you're married, you understand. If you're not, well, marriage is wonderful. I just want you to know that you may get frustrated occasionally. Anyway, um, so, so I'm frustrated, and, and, and the Lord just whispers to me, she misses Jake, our son. I thought, I should have known that. I should have seen that's what this was, because it was his first year of college. And, you know, I, I just went over to her and put my arms around her, and, and she didn't even know. She didn't even, you know, because it was so much on her mind, she didn't even realize how, what I had just done. But I put my arms around her and said, I miss him too, honey. And she just held me, you know. And, and, and but you think about this, you know, I wouldn't have known if I hadn't stopped. You know, here I was. I want to fix this. I'm going to fix this. I'm a guy. You know, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to straighten this out. I'm going to tell her to knock it off. No, you know, let's, let's be, let's let the control thing go. You know, James, I think it's a 120, 19 and 20. It, it says anger, just this is a Dave paraphrase, so bear with me. It says anger doesn't bring about the life that God wants in your, for you. Anger doesn't bring about the kind of life God wants for you. Praise God. One time I was, boy, Lord. I hate it when he has me tell stories of myself. I guess it's better than me telling stories about you, though. And some of you I don't know, but but I'll tell you in this anyway. But I, I had a car accident in 2001 or so, something like that. But I was late to something, and it was dark. And I turned the wrong way on the interstate. And, of course, it was one of those where there's not an exit for, you know, a thousand miles or something. And so I was so frustrated because I was already late. And so, you know, I got up to the exit, and I went across on the overpass and went back onto the interstate. And, and I was heading up, but I just, I, when I got onto that entrance ramp, I hit the gas, like, you know, as hard as I could, because I'm just frustrated, and I'm late, and, and uh, when I got up to um, the, the actual interstate, or the highway, uh, there was a drunk driver who swerved at me, and I spun, I turned my car to get out of the way, and my car just started spinning like this, and then it went over and hit a, a pole, and and but 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 l let me explain to you that 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 you know how the they, the cops come out you know and they have those little things and they look at the skid marks and look at everything and, and he goes yeah you hit you hit the pole at thirty five miles an hour and it slid sideways so like I was right here right and it, it hit the car right there and what I felt and you I gotta get where you can see me. Um, here's what I felt, but I hit it going 35 miles an hour. But you understand that was the Lord, right? Wow! <laughs> it was like this. I barely felt it. They made they they said it was so bad that they made me go to the hospital to get checked out. And I'm like, now, now I'll tell you this. 
I hit the pole, and then the pole fell on the car. So the only there were the only panel that didn't have damage on the car. Well, no, there were two panels that didn't have damage. The driver or the passenger side front quarter panel up there, you know, uh -huh. is that what they call it? And the driver side door. Every other panel on the car had damage. The roof, the trunk, each side of the trunk, my door, it was a two-door car, uh, that, that, and the hood, the windshield, the top, yeah, everything. Everything else had damage. Just those two panels didn't have damage. So it was not a low-level accident. You understand that? It bent the frame, twisted the frame. You know, I mean, it was, yeah. And I felt, that's it. Nothing. So I couldn't believe it when he told me that, but... I, I, I'm telling you this because I asked the Lord, why did that happen? He goes, anger doesn't bring about the kind of life I want for you. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I like that translation. But, but guys, you know what? We, how many of us spend time angry at our families, mm -hmm. angry at our kids, angry at our spouse? We get all been out of shape about stuff. And, and, uh, that's not our heart to do that. No. But we let our flesh ride up, rise up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We let our flesh rise up in our kids. I know good. Doesn't do any good for them either. You understand that, right? Nope. Yeah. Amen. You know, uh, Hebrews one and two say this. Uh, I think I think it's in uh, it's in Isaiah where Isaiah is prophesying. He said Jesus set his face like flint. And, and in, in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it, it says, For the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. You know, there's some things we have to endure in our families and with people and be patient and kind instead of angry and controlling because yeah. we got our eye on the goal. What's that goal? We want a godly, uh, self-sufficient, capable kid to come out of our home, don't we? Yeah, I, I want, you know, I, for my wife, I want her to to follow God's plan for her life, not my plan. I know God put her with me, so I know our plans are going to be together, but I'm not going to try to control what she does. I'm not going to tell her what to do. I'm not going to make her do anything that just because it's my way or the highway. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because, because you know, Jesus, he just had his eye on the goal. The, the Father said, you know, he said, I do my, my meat is to do the will of the Father. That's all I want to think about. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to say what he says. I'm going to do what he does. And, and he lived his life. Now, does that mean he didn't have to eat or do all the other things we do? No, he did all that stuff too. But, right. but he, he kept his eye on the ball. He yeah. kept his eye on the goal. And, yeah. and if we can do that, now, does that mean you'll never correct your kids? Of course not. You have to correct your kids. You guide them, though. We don't beat them up, right? We don't, you know, do we ever have to talk to each other? Of course we do. You know, if she gets off, we talk. If I get off, she talks. That's more likely, by the way. But, uh, but, 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 but we help each other. Amen. We're not trying to control each other and, and beat each other up. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, I, 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 I like this because... I can only control what I do at the end of the day. That's all I can do. I can't yeah. make a kid do anything. You heard about the, the, the dad who, who put his, his kid in, in, in a chair in time out, and, and the, the little kid said to him, he goes, after a while, you know, he wouldn't even sit down, but he finally got him sitting on the chair, and the kid says to his dad, he goes, well, I'm sitting down, but inside I'm standing up. Well, yeah, that's right. So, so you know, uh, I can't control what anybody else does. Thank God. Yes. Really? I'm thankful for that. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I heard about a teacher in a book by a guy named Jim Fay who, who did this. I love this so much. You know, she couldn't, she was harping on her seniors. She's trying to get them to turn in their homework so they could graduate. And they wouldn't turn in their homework. They wouldn't do their assignments. She's fighting with them. She's harping on them. She's yelling at them. They're not doing it. So she put two inboxes on her desk. One of them said, papers, I'm going to grade tonight. The other one said, papers I'm going to grade this summer. And if they brought them on time, she put them in the top one. And if they brought them late, she put them in the bottom one. And then one of the students said to her, um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
how, how are we going to graduate if you don't grade our papers till this summer? She's like, yeah, I don't know. And <laughs> see, do you see the difference? There's no control there. We're just letting people. This, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. That, 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 that applies to our families, you know. I'll give you an example. You got young kids and they won't clean their room. Say, okay, kids, all right, this weekend we're going to go to, to Andy's Ice Cream and uh, we're going we're gonna to have hot fudge Sundays on, on Saturday afternoon for all the kids who keep their rooms clean this week. And uh, little Tommy doesn't keep his room clean. And so, you know, uh, the, the two other kids have their room clean and Tommy doesn't have his room clean. So, so when it's time to go to Andy's for ice cream, uh, you tell Tommy, well, Tommy, we, I told you on Monday that every, all the kids who kept the room clean this week, we were going to go have ice cream at Andy's, uh, you know, this afternoon. You didn't keep your room clean. I'm so sorry. But Big Bird is here to watch you, and the rest of us are going to Andy's, and uh, you leave Tommy with Big Bertha, and you go on to Andy's, and you make sure you come home with the ice cream bowls and everything so that Tommy can see what he missed out on. You know, the next time you tell Tommy, uh, you know, here's what we're going to do. You tell him what I'm going to do. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to tell you what the expectation is, but I'm not going to control you. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to harp on you. I'm just going to let you know what's happening. And you let it happen. Now, see, if we could learn to live that way, there's so much, think how much more peace there is than that. Then you, you know, you follow and kid around a lecture and, 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 you know, but the same thing applies to all the other people in your life. Yeah. You know, I, I work with a staff at, the, at my church, not a big staff, you know, we just have two people besides me and, uh, you know, and the pastors, but, you know, there's <laughs> staff people, there's three of them. And, and, and you know, I, I just lay out expectations. If they don't follow those, then, then we talk about what that means and how that looks. But, but if I had to follow them around all day and lecture them and control them, you know, A, that isn't how God would do it, and B, that's not how I want to do it because I don't want to live in stress. How about you? Amen. Man, I'm going to have you look at this one. Ephesians chapter 5. Pastor, how much time do we have here? Are we about then? Oh. All right. Ephesians chapter 5. we got a couple more things and we'll wind her down. Husbands, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church. Hello, is that Amen. a tall order? Or what? Tall order. That's a tall one. Wow. Verse 28, skip down. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. Another word similar to that in the Greek is cultivates. Ever have a garden? Ever have a farm? Mm-hmm nourishes and cherishes. It actually sounds a whole lot like what God said to Adam in the garden when he put him into the garden. It says he put him into the garden eating to cultivate it and to keep it. All right? Now, nourishes and cherishes, if you were to ask me, is that applied to the, the husband or the wife, the mom or the dad, most of us would say, well, that sounds like the mom. Well, no, according to the word, it sounds like the dad. All right? You know, guys, we want to be on top of making sure that there's that we're nourishing and cherishing our spouses, that we're nourishing and cherishing our children, and making them feel valuable, making them feel important, okay? Amen. Because, because uh, as we stop controlling and stop expecting perfection and stop speaking negative things over our family... It's amazing what God can do because you're giving God space to operate, okay? Thank you, Lord. You know, if you're single out there and, and you're looking for a spouse, uh, here, here's, here's what my pastor at home says all the time, and, and it's so good I have to say it. You know, he says, okay, if you're a guy and you're looking for a wife, then you be the kind of guy that God would want to give one of his daughters to. Amen. Amen. And ladies, if you're single and you're looking for a husband, then you be the kind of woman that God would want to give one of his sons to. Okay? Yes. Amen. You know, let's let's learn how to walk in, in him. Let's learn how, to learn how to walk with him. And you know what? If you're already married, it still applies. You be that kind of guy. 
You be that kind of woman. That, that God is pleased that his son or his daughter is with. You know, I, I started out saying everything's messy in this world. You know, our families are messy, okay? But, but, but the new normal, according to God's word, is what God's word says, right? If he says you're a new creation, the new normal is, I am a new creation. Amen. Yes, yes. You know, Jesus said he came to give us life and life abundantly. Abundant life is the new normal, guys. Okay, hear me. It's not pie in the sky. If it wasn't possible for that to be in our lives, God would be unjust for telling us it was possible to be in our lives. But it is possible. Yes. We're just not walking in it the way we need to walk in it 100%. Amen. You know, God loves a cheerful giver. I am cheerful. I am a giver. You know, love, joy, peace. Those are the new normal. Amen. Hello, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, yeah. all right, faithfulness, self-control. Those are the new normal. Those Amen. are the new way. That's yeah. what God wants us walking in. Amen. Amen. I'm going to close up by reading this to you. Um, and, and you probably know these verses, but they're, they're, worth, they're worth looking at. Isaiah chapter 41. Yeah. Uh, verse, sorry, verse 9. It says, you whom I have taken, and actually a better translation of, of that is, taken hold of from the ends of the earth and called from its remotest parts. I think that's somewhere near Scott City, but I'm not 100% sure <laughs> on that one. Um, and actually, the remotest part is where I used to live in Minnesota, and no one could find that town if they needed to. Anyway, and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you, not rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Behold, all those who are angered at you will be shamed and dishonored. Those who contend you, with you will be as nothing and will perish. You will seek those who quarrel with you but will not find them. Those who war with you will be as nothing and non-existent. For I am the Lord your God who upholds your right hand, who says to you, do not fear, I will help you. You know what, in every turn in life, Look for his help. He's right there. He said, I would never leave you or forsake you. He's right there all the time. He's not gonna, he's not gonna abandon you. He's not gonna jump off the ship. He's not gonna stop leading. He's not gonna quit his job as a shepherd, throw his staff down and stomp off. He's not gonna do any of those things. He said hey, he would never leave us or forsake us. Yeah, but I messed up. Yeah, you have probably so have I. But Amen. did you notice he didn't leave? He didn't leave. He's got you, he's got your family, he's got you in his hand, and he said nobody can take you out of his hand. Praise God. So, so you're right there, that's where you are, you're right there, in his hand, he's got his eye on you. You know, when we think about it this way, you know, we say we ask Jesus into our hearts, but if you look at Acts when Paul was talking, he said, in him we live and breathe. And have our being. You know what? Your life is expressed within him. It's really not the other way around. It's easier for us to think about it that way, that we ask him into us. But the truth is, is that in him we live and move and have our being. We're expressed in him. We're part of him. And as we learn to flow with him, as we learn to walk with him and follow him, Thank you, God Jesus. will start working out the things in our lives. And those things that aren't working, we surround them with faith and love, and we speak over them, and we move forward within God with those things. Yes. Amen. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that, thank you, Lord. that your word is true. No matter how things look, your word is true. Thank you. No matter how bad we see things that are going, your word is true. And you're working through things. You're working out our salvation with us. You're helping us. You're strengthening us. You're lifting us up with your righteous right hand. And Lord, we cling to you. We're thankful, Lord, that we're in your hand. And that no one can snatch us out of your hand. And that we're in the Father's hand. And nobody can snatch us out of his hand. And we thank you, God, that you're strengthening us. You're strengthening our spouses. You're strengthening our families. And you're bringing about all the things that your word promises. You're bringing those things out one at a time. And we believe you. We receive that from you. We expect that from you. And we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name.
Amen. 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 Pastor Ken. Hallelujah. Praise God. Push that pulpit off to the side where you're there. And I want you and Leanne to stand in the middle of the sanctuary there. That time. I want to open uh, this up for a time of prayer. If you need prayer for yourself, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to come home, back into fellowship with Him. Or if you need prayer for you, yourself, your family, or one of your children, you just want some prayer of agreement, you want someone to lay hands on you, you just want somebody to agree with you in prayer, I want you to come and let uh, Brother Dave and Leanne pray with you. If you're not comfortable with being that close to somebody, uh, well, stand about six feet away from them and they'll get the clue. <laughs> Here we are, gathered together as a family. Bound as one, lifting up our voices to the King of kings, we cry Abba, Father, worthy right. is your name, we cry Abba, Congregation, yeah. if you're not coming to prayer, stretch your hands out at least a little bit and just kind of agree with those that are out here. Here we are singing together. Oh, 